Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave coming to you from the front porch, and this is going to have to be our reasonable uh, facsimile for a fireside chat because it's been pouring down rain for the last five hours. It's about five o'clock on um, on Wednesday afternoon, and it's just not going to stop. It's going to keep pouring. It's back. In fact, it's supposed to get worse over the next couple hours. Rain all night, rain all day tomorrow, and into tomorrow night. So. No fireside chat tonight, so this is what we're going to do instead. First thing I'm going to do, for you guys, my OGs, I used to do this a lot. I used to do a lot of, uh, especially last summer, early in the summer. So uh, I did quite a few front porch chats. I haven't done one of these in a while because I switched everything to the fire table and to the, to the uh, fire pit. So anyway, I'm going to spin you around for a minute and show you what I see as I talk to you. Uh, just show you my front yard. This is literally what I see. I'm just sitting in the chair. I'm going to give you a spin across. The grass has turned super green in the last two or three weeks. That's, uh, that's the road down to my neighbors. That's the last house we share that the driveway with one house. And then my buddy Ed across the way there, he's the other house you can see. That's really it. So there's my front woods, front porch, front view. So what's our cigar, cigar going to be? You probably guess it. I'm going to do the uh, Churchill, the late hour. Get my eyes blocked here. So Winston Churchill, the late hour. Let's see, I punch cut it. I don't have too much to talk about tonight. Truly a fantastic cigar. I know I've said that like 10 times on these videos, but it's truly a great cigar. So March has definitely been that traditional battle of seasons, hasn't it? It's 45 one day and 70 the next, and then it's 50, and then it's raining, and then it's blustery, and then it's 80. And the last two days have been beautiful, and today 45 and... There's no wind, but boy, is it gray and rainy. Now tomorrow I head straight back into the dead of winter. You know, several feet of snow and like 15 degrees in the morning. So this will be our last Maryland fireside chat for a while. Out of here at 5.30 in the morning tomorrow. I got a car picking me up to drive me to the airport. That way Emory doesn't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning. It's about an hour's drive to Dulles. But it's it take you gotta go through about half of the DC Beltway to get from our house to their house uh, from our house to the Dulles airport. And 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning is pretty much pretty much rush hour. And then she dropped me off at 6.30 and then come back through rush hour the other way. So, you know, the D.C. Beltway is rush hour both ways on the Beltway. So that would be no fun. So have a paid professional do it tomorrow. <clears throat> so I pretty much have first flight out of Dulles. It's, uh, it's an 8 a.m. flight. Sometimes during the peak ski season or peak summer season, they'll have a 6 a.m. flight, which is really nice because you land. You know, it's a far flight. You get two hours back because of the time change. So you leave at 6 a.m. and you land in Denver at 8 a.m. That's pretty cool.
but we're in the middle of what they call shoulder season. You know, spring and fall are shoulder seasons, and so they cut the flights, number of flights. So first one's out at 8. <clears throat> Still pretty cool. I land in Denver at 10 a.m. And my truck's parked pretty much right there. Now I should be standing in front of Sean and Ranger by about 11 a.m. Denver time tomorrow. That's pretty cool. I like that. I also like first flight out because it doesn't mean it means you're normally not waiting for equipment to be moved around. So the the plane you need for at 8 a.m. is typically sitting there, sometimes all night, but certainly for several hours. You're not sitting there waiting for the flight to come in from Tucson or Philadelphia or Miami. Because that's the other place I I find you get screwed up on travel is you get there on time and the flight crew shows up, but the plane doesn't. So that's why I like first flights. A little brutal sometimes you need somebody to get up at three in the morning but it's uh makes a nice rest of the day nice so sorry no dogs tonight they're both curled up on the couch of the emery right now with the fire going emery and i have a little tradition i don't know how we got to start we go to lito's for pizza the night before I leave for one of these long trips. We go a little bit early and that lets us have a nice fire and quiet evening together before I take off. Um, it's always a little sad the night before. It's weird, you know. I, I sit there and I'm like, well, I'm leaving my wife, I'm leaving my dogs, I'm leaving my home. Leaving the paddock, leaving the fire pit, leaving the fire table. You know, what am I doing? But then tomorrow I'll get there, get there with the, my son and pick up Ranger and have an adventure, get into the house, and then it'll be fantastic once I get there. So, And then what's really funny, screwed up in how screwed up my head is, when it's uh, in four weeks, when it's time to come the other way, I'll be depressed that night before too. I'll be like, oh man, I'm leaving this beautiful wilderness and this great house and I got to give Ranger back. And, you know, there's a, it's funny, you know, that's how I know both both places are equally great to live in because I'm equally depressed to leave either one for the and the night before. So our badge supply did not show up. <clears throat> so a little bit screwed as I leave tomorrow morning. So either a miracle will occur and they'll show up tonight or show up by 5.30 tomorrow morning or I addressed two of those little boxes like I send to you guys to myself in Wyoming. And I'll ask my wife to stuff as many bags as she can into those two boxes and ship them to myself when they get here. Because I really don't want to take a month off on getting those things out. I've already got like 12 or 13 or 14 that uh, need to go out. So I'd rather get those done. This cigar has the best retro hell I've ever I've ever been a part of. I've ever experienced. It's so smooth. <clears throat> so now and then I confess to you guys that I don't feel stupid, but then I do something unbelievably stupid and in my green pipe video today i believe i did it slow mo randy was so kind about how he pointed it out but i was holding what i called the musang in my hand but it said salvinelli on it. it confused the hell out of me and he said dave i think he just reversed him in the box which is probably true i can be that stupid but i'm i'm not gonna i, I don't have time to get back to the paddock and check so the stupidity will stand i'm not going to take the video down it's just gonna have to be out there And when I get back in a month, I'll, uh, I'll go check it out and see what I did. But I figure it's just easier to come clean and say that, yeah, I can be that stupid sometimes. You know, my wife, Anne-Marie, might say I'm that way a lot. Who knows? But 
you know, I don't feel stupid, but then I do shit like that. Feels good to have the paddock all organized and all the tobacco safe and everything's put away. The desk is organized. Man, it felt good. So <clears throat> I like all my stuff organized. I'm gonna, that grandma's saying, what is it? Uh, a place for everything and everything in its place. I definitely like that. I don't like searching for things. I don't like losing things. I have things organized where they are. I think better when my desk is clean. So before I go leave on a trip, I feel really good because I spent yesterday and today was spent basically getting getting my shit all together, getting everything straight, getting all my laundry done, making sure the grocery stopping was completely done, make sure everything's folded and put away, make sure the rooms are clean, the house is clean, the paddock is clean, the cars are good. I love knowing that everything is good and organized and, and in a good good condition, you know. Um leaving Amory in a, as good a condition as I can. I like that. A couple of you are asking me if I take the dogs with me. So it's a complex answer, but the the two that you've been seeing the last few nights do not travel. Um, Echo and Chance, we don't take them anywhere. Um, so part of the reason is Amory and I don't travel together. Um, with her mom being 87, we're her primary caregiver. So when I'm gone, Amory's there pretty much every day. But when Amory needs to go, like if she's going to take care of Lauren or she goes with her friends to the beach or she takes her friends out to the Wyoming house in August or September, Then I make sure I'm here full time for mom. So it's been a couple of years where we just haven't traveled together. Now we had almost 15 years of traveling together with the kids. So it's really not that big of a deal, you know, and someday we will again. But for now, um, mom and mom and Amory's sister and Amory's sister's autistic kid take priority of us traveling together. So eventually we'll do that. But what also it makes it easy to leave the dogs at home. You know, we don't have to kennel them. We don't have to, you know, drag them with us. They wouldn't travel. They wouldn't enjoy the trip much anyway. Um, but then it gets complex because you saw in the, at, at, um, I guess, Thanksgiving time. And then you saw again in January, I traveled across the country with a dog. Well, that was Ranger, the German Shepherd. That's my son's dog. And um, he travels really well. He travels a lot. So he he came here to Maryland for the for about a little over two months. <clears throat> he spent the entire holiday season here, and that let Aunt, that let Sean <clears throat> fly on a moment's notice whenever he could to come here <clears throat> and stay here as long as he could, fly home in between the holidays, and then come right back. So that by driving Ranger home across country to here. You know, allowed us to spend, you know, the better part of four to six weeks with Sean. So that was really good. So, um, so anyway, that may be why you, I confuse you guys. I've dogs here, and you hear me talk about Ranger and travel with Ranger, but I don't travel with R2. Now, while I have Sean these next few weeks, I'm going to talk to him about maybe we can do the same kind of thing this summer while bringing Ranger home for the summer. And Sean can fly home because I think Lauren's coming home for the summer. <clears throat> so with Lauren coming home, Sean might want to come home a little bit more. And by having Ranger here, maybe I'll get Sean here four, five, six weeks this summer. That would be pretty cool. That's the worth the drive for me. To get Ranger here is a two-day drive. It's from it's the same every time. It's, uh, Denver to St. Louis, St. Louis to here. And when I go back, it's here to St. Louis and then St. Louis to Denver. It's two, two 12 or 13 hour days. Just is what it is. You know, you stop now and then, let Ranger out. But it works great. It'll work better in the summer than it did the winter. 
anyway, so that's all about the dog travel. So I got my next shipment. <clears throat> my next shipment from Esterville just came in about an hour ago. And um, Mark, you left me, uh, Welsh Piper, you left me a comment about the cost of shipping now. It's interesting. I think it almost doesn't matter what I ship from Estervalls now. It's about ninety dollars just for the shipping. Um, so far, I haven't had an order get stopped for customs or anything on the U.S. side. But just a regular box now is ninety bucks. <clears throat> That's whether I go DHL or or UPS, and I always choose DHL because I now have sixteen orders that have come in through DHL without a flaw. So I'm not gonna don't fix what's not broken, right? You guys, I had two ideas for videos for you guys if you're willing to take it on. So one is we'd been talking about a little bit yesterday during last night's uh, fireside chat, but the, the sort of random occurrence that's happening now is what is being, why does being part of Team Freedom appeal to you? What does it mean to you? Don't try to get the answer right. What does it mean to you? We've had three or four people put up um why why that's important to them and i thought they were pretty good so you don't have to vr it that's not what i'm trying to do you can just put up your own vid about what why is team freedom important to you or what does team freedom mean to you i think it'd be good to see some vids about you know what 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 it means to each person so i don't think it means the same thing to absolutely everybody and um i, I really felt some power in the movement when people start putting up what it means to them. So that's my first vid idea is if you want to do it, just put up a, it can be a short one, two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is about why you asked for the badge and what does it mean to you to have it. The second one came to me while I was watching Sapper Piper today. He did his third installment. I don't think he's creating a series or a playlist out of it, which, which you should, by the way, Zach, but he did his third installment of his life story. And um, I find those pretty riveting. So, um, so Zach, one, I would create a playlist and put all three. And I don't know how many more you intend to do, but it'd be nice for people who don't you know you and don't want to search back through all your videos um, to go to a playlist and say, "Hey, you have an eight-part my life list," you know, and they're and they're they're all there. But the idea I had is, if people. Not everyone's going to feel comfortable. I do. I mean, I get it. Not everyone even feels comfortable commenting, much less putting up videos as a presenter, much less <coughs> putting up your life story. <laughs> but um, I've enjoyed putting most of mine up. And um, Zach obviously is liking to put his up. And a lot of you put pieces up here and there or you talk to it. So um, Bill Keach did a day in the life of. and. It just might be kind of fun to hear your life story little by little. I don't know. Not everyone's going to be comfortable doing it. I certainly realize that. But I just throw it out there as a video idea. Start telling us your life in different pieces. That's all. Mr. Helpful's out now. <clears throat> I'm feeling super relaxed. So I guess that's... I, I want to say something now to probably ping the offensive meter a little bit. So in my dangerous series, a number of you are commenting like, let's straight down the Democratic playbook or the Democrats playbook or you can't wait till November. And I made the comment that there's no savior coming in November. But I also want to, I don't know if you guys are pulling up the votes, you know, the votes for, you know, you guys are pretty upset about where the money's going now. Well, there are just as many Republicans voting for that budget as there are Democrats. And there are just as so many sponsors for crazy shit into the budget that come from the Republican side as the Democrat side now. And so um, yeah, how we spend money and the priorities of the nation really <clears throat> aren't as different from left to right anymore as they used to be. I know it's not fun to hear, but... I also don't want you to think like, you know, even if there was a ground shift, which there isn't one coming, you know, and, and 
you know, the Republicans were to take both sides of the Congress, I don't think you'd see a whole lot of change. And I think that has a lot to do with how things these people are selected now. We can call them elected if you want, but it's, the election is largely over by the time it gets to us. <clears throat> the process to get to the primary and the process to get through the primary is largely a selection process. And I, I think if you don't hold the, like the World Economic Forum's ideas, if you don't agree with Agenda 30, if you don't agree with you know, a more homogenous worldwide government, if you don't agree with spending money the way you're seeing it being spent, I, I just think you don't make it. It doesn't matter what letter you have behind your name anymore. Anyway, I bring that up mainly because I really don't like the idea of people having false hope or false expectations of what could happen this November or next January or starting in even in the next year or so. I just think that just sets us up for such huge, <clears throat> sometimes life-crushing or soul-crushing disappointment. Not pleasant to hear, I'm sure, but I just wanted to say it out loud that I don't think it particularly matters what happens in November at any level. <clears throat> State, Congress, Senate, President, I don't think it's going to change all that much. So I know there's a lot of comments and a lot of YouTube videos now about was the key bridge ramming <clears throat> intentional or part of a terrorist act. And um, I made the comment yesterday that I didn't think so, and I'm going to stand by that today. Um, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying I've not seen enough evidence or conversation about it yet. And the acid test for me is, you know, will we experience another accident in our infrastructure? And if so, you know, that I think that makes a, a larger case, a stronger case for this one not being so accidental. You know, I understand the argument. It wouldn't take much. It would take the uh, it would take the corruption of one knowledgeable crew member. It would not not the pilot, not the team of pilots, not the captain, but one person who knew how to kill an engine for ten minutes and make that look like an accident. So it would be I don't know if I'd call it easy, but it'd be fairly simple. You turn one or two people on a crew, almost at the bottom end of the crew, you know, which probably aren't making much money, so it might be easy to bribe them. I mean, it's possible. I can make the case. I just don't know if I'm ready really to declare this a foreign act of terrorism yet. So my thoughts are, let's just not declare it. It, it is or it is not yet. You know, let's let the next few weeks go by, you know, and see if, see if our mind can be made up by facts and by by investigation and that, or they, do they whitewash it? You know, if they whitewash it, if they rush it through, if they find nothing wrong with anything anywhere, I mean, then that certainly helps make the case that it was intentional. I'd say be wary, you know, be wary of jumping on the bandwagon of it was an absolute terrorist act or on the bandwagon that it absolutely wasn't. I, I don't think we know enough yet. I'm hoping I can get you guys some good wildlife shots this trip. Last trip was only five days, so I didn't really have enough time. You know, just really, it's just time on the property more than anything. And the number of times I drive on and off out of the park. But um, I know this time last year we had some great moose shots and some good elk shots. I had one real up a close personal through the window of a, of a male grizzly because they're waking up about this time of year. The males wake up first and come out of their hibernation caves about a month before the before the females and the cubs do. So um, it's kind of a dangerous time to be out and about <clears throat> because when the males are out and they're all by themselves, they're grumpy and hungry. And they wander around in the early morning, like 3, 4, or 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's still pretty dark out. You have to be careful. Like, I have to be careful when I let Ranger out to make sure there's nobody out there and to keep my eye on him while he's out there. It's less dangerous in the daytime. 
anyway, it'd be kind of fun. And then um, I try to drive into town every day, and it's about 30, 33 miles into town. So it's uh, 66 miles, and this time of year it's light enough when I come home. I usually leave town around 6, 6.30 in the evening, so we should be able to see something. Hopefully we get some bison in the bison in the road. Those are the best when a herd of buffalo, bison or buffalo, get out on the road and stop traffic. Usually those are pretty good, pretty good size herds, and uh, the little ones are out. The reds, as they call them, that makes for pretty good video. So hopefully we'll start doing that. Hopefully Friday we start to get lucky. And it sounds like Fourth of July week might be a busy week out in the Wyoming area. Two of you guys I've heard from already. Bill Keach is going to be in Dubois. And um, Dave Central Cal Piper is going to be coming through that week as well. So hopefully we'll have a couple of the meetups going on that Fourth of July week. I've been out there the last couple of years, Fourth of July week. So I'm hoping to do that again this year. It's a great week to be there. The Fourth of July parade is straight out of the old, old USA small town parade. It's just totally fun. So to both Bill Keach and to Dave, man, my plans are to be there and, and you know have meetups with you guys. That would be pretty cool. And today is uh today's uh, March 27th, and I started reading the Bible third time through the Scriptures version on December 27th, and so I'm exactly halfway through my third read of the Bible today. Kind of exciting. You know, when you first start that daily tracker, I have it just when you start that first century, it's Seems so impossible, so long, and now here I am three months later, I'm halfway through it. It's pretty cool. Hopefully some of you have picked up some reading. I know for three years now I found it to be quite satisfying. There's a lot of perplexing shit in the Bible. And it's kind of fun to be able to talk to Potter Piper about it. <clears throat> But to know what the Bible actually says and not have to rely on what he or anybody tells me, um, it says, you know, now I can talk about how I interpret it versus how he or others interpret it. And I like that. I feel uh, certainly not as an equal, but I at least can discuss, well, that's not what it says. This is what it says. You know, where do you come up with that interpretation? It does make for really good conversations. And now my wife asks me, not every morning, but a lot of mornings, hey, what did you read today? And she asks me about stories she remembers from the Bible, and she wants to know what it actually says. So I actually get it out and read it to her. It's pretty fun. It starts whole different levels of conversations, even between people who have been married for 35 years. We're talking at a whole different level now. So at pizza this afternoon, my wife and I were talking about artificial intelligence and how AI is affecting different parts of the world. And she was lamenting, she's a huge photography person. I mean, she's been into photography since the day I knew her, and she's really into it. So is my son. And she was lamenting the fact that several AI, several, uh, professional photographers we're talking about AI pretty much you can see the end of photography coming with uh, as AI becomes more and more involved in it I guess the National Geographic does a you know the, an annual photography competition and it was discovered that two of the top five winners this year were AI generated they weren't even photography So we're talking about impacts on our kids' careers because my daughter does computer animation and my son does. He's a dual stack engineer if you guys are tech people, but his true specialty is designing the interface from a human being to those who use these different <clears throat> programs that they write. A user interface engineer. And how both could really be impacted by AI over the next five to ten years. It was just interesting that something as monumental as photography may end up going away, at least professionally. 
I mean, you and I taking pictures with our iPhones probably will never go away. But at the more professional level, it might actually disappear because of AI. I know the criminal justice system is very worried about it because we're not too far away from not being able to tell if a video or a picture is AI generated and not real. So can you, you know, we might be a few years away from photography and videography not being submittable as evidence anymore. And that will really change, um, probably not for the best, the way we try crime. You know, interesting thoughts. Not sure where it's going. No, as usual, no idea where I'm going with that. I just thought it was an interesting subject, so I thought I'd bring it up, say it out loud today. If you guys know of any, not so much your opinions, but I'd be interested in hearing your opinions, but have you seen AI touch anyone? Anyone uh, in your career or anyone you know? Has AI had any impact on a life, either yours or those around you? I mean, you can certainly express your opinion. We all do. I'm just curious if you've seen anything factual, if you've seen anything actually impact a life. Then I'll answer that question. I don't think I do. I don't think it's affected my life yet. And I don't know of anyone who's lost a job or changed a career because of it. I could be wrong, but so far I don't think I know anybody. So I think I'm pretty safe from my pipe acquisition disorder over the next month because I don't usually look for them online. And um, I really love, I have a Wyoming Meerschaum out there that I smoke every day, which you would think I'd learn my lesson, but I probably won't. I'll probably smoke it every day I'm out there. Um, but I don't think I'll be safe from my tobacco acquisition disorder. I'll probably continue to order online because I'd like to build up I mean, not to the level I have here in Maryland, but I'd like to build up my Wyoming stash. And, and in particular, you know, I don't know where this HU thing is going, but there are several HU blends that are still readily available on Esterval. So if I continue to, I've got one order already headed towards Wyoming. And if DHL can deliver to the wilderness without, without an issue, I'll probably put up some like, uh, I think, Haymaker. Haymaker, Sunset, and Flanagan seem readily available, at least last time I looked. So I'll put a supply of stock of those in my Wyoming stash. Partially because I like sticking them in the boxes with the badges. You know, I think um, HE's got such a kind of worldwide crazy reputation right now. And it's so talked about, it's fun to throw one in the box. But if you got if you're gonna send out forty or fifty or sixty badges, that's a lot of ten. So I'll probably be adding a bunch. If I can, we'll see. I don't even know. I haven't been on Esterbells for a few days. So I don't know what their stock looks like. Well guys, we're almost to the nubby. Let's go ahead and uh, not make this too long. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits and um Finish up this last fireside chat and um, go take a shower and spend the rest of the evening with my wife. I know that tomorrow is probably going to be a no video day. I'll just tell you that straight out. <clears throat> I mean, if a miracle occurs, I'll take some video of going through the wilds of Wyoming. If, if I can drive that way, we'll see. And give you some shots of Ranger. And maybe I can pull something together at the end of the day. But end of the day will be like 8 or 9 p.m. Wyoming time. So that's like 10, 11 o'clock East Coast time. So if I can do it, I'll pull together a quick travel vid. We'll see. I just want to set, set expectations that tomorrow may be a no vid day. <clears throat> then we literally car picks me up at 5 30 in the morning and i probably won't pull in till 8 p.m wyoming time at the house so be a long day you know what is that almost 18 hour day so just just trying to be honest about it <coughs> and with that guys let's go ahead, <coughs> let's go ahead and end it may god bless you May God bless those around you, your family, your friends.
May God turn his ear towards your prayer. May God make his face shine upon you. May God bless your life and those around you as well as he's blessed mine. I have a privileged life. I know it's because of him. And I just like to say it out loud. You guys have a great Wednesday afternoon. Have a great Thursday. Maybe we'll talk tomorrow night. If not, we will definitely talk on Freedom Friday. Hey, a Wyoming Freedom Friday. That'll be fun to do. All right, you guys. Have a great night. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody.